Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, it's time for a panel of the day three of Catch 2016 conference. Uh, panel three uh, will be dealing with the fact that there's too much money in the markets, but it was never harder to get it, and uh, these five people on the stage will help us find the key for that, for that dilemma. On stage, we have Mr. Daniel Schenk, the investor and MA and corporate finance banker. Hello, welcome. Uh, Mr. Stefan Rin, co-founder and managing partner, Eureas Group AG, welcome. Uh, Lothar Eckstein, investor and founder, Mixzone. Welcome back. Dan Nikolic, CEO and founder of Content Insights. Hello. And Helena Rosendich, managing director of Bruketa and Genich. Hello and welcome. Um, uh, Ms. Rosendich, you, you come from the field of marketing mostly. Yes. Um, has this area changed in terms of how people try to get uh, to, the, to investors, how to try, how they try to reach them, how they try to communicate with them. Uh, it's the fast developing uh, market, uh, but does this change or some things stay the same forever? Well, I would say that definitely market to market uh, uh, a startup is different than to market a regular, um, let's say regular company. And I think that a lot of startups are actually refusing to work with uh, marketing agencies and they are rightly refusing to work with marketing agencies because traditional marketing agencies cannot cater to a startup because those, they, different, they, they communicate differently. I mean, startup needs different approach. So the services and um, I would say the basic stays the same though. You know, you need to know your market. You need to understand your product. You need to know to whom you are selling to product, your product. And of course, you need to, I mean, whom you are selling to the customers as well, to the, to the investors that you are offering. So I would say that basic understanding of what marketing is, is the same. But um, startup uh, world um, has different pace. And that's why I think that agencies cannot completely, um, they're not always right for a startup to, to, to employ. Yeah, basically, I mean, you, you mentioned one thing, like uh, the world of startups changed. I don't think like startup, the world of startups has changed because of always like solving a problem, taking out friction of like a uh, existing model that like has been, when Google arrived, like Google, there was the internet available, but you couldn't find it. So like they developed search, taking out friction and solved the problem. Apple has done it before. So I think like that thesis always stays the same. What has changed is that money has become much more smarter actually that invest like with having invested in cycles lost went up again etc so money smartens and that makes it harder than to get it today or at least the impression that it's hard to get but we have much more money available today in that asset class so um, uh, it's smarter but i wouldn't really say like it's harder to get and also you can get much further with less money than than ever before you know so Basically, you can bootstrap yourself up to up to a market almost, you know. So if if you're in a good field, um, uh, 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 and, uh, and because you know, of the I mean the startup industry. That means the industry that caters to startup is also developing maybe even faster than the startup industry itself. So basically, it's you have all the tools uh, for for really small amount of money that I don't know maybe 15 or 20 years ago you would need fortune to to acquire. So. Um, uh, uh, it's as easy as, uh, as uh, I mean, it's easiest ever to, to actually try and do something. So uh, trying was very expensive before, you know, so now you can even like try and see if there's something el else there or not. Yeah. You know, so. Th thank you for that input. Uh, Mr. Rin, there's a question for you. Um, what, is, um, what is more likely to succeed? Uh, a bad idea in the hands of smart people or not such a bad idea in the hands uh, of people that do not know what to do with it. Clear answer to that. It really remains about people. I, I think you need to use your microphone. I'm uh, sorry. Clear answer to this. It really remains uh, to the people. It comes down to the people. Um, I have seen, based on my experience, brilliant ideas, concepts, products, services um, with uh, the wrong people on top managing it. Um, it can go on uh, in a second. At the same time, I have seen ideas or products or services which haven't been that outstanding, but uh, with the right people behind it, um, they drove it and, and, and really made it successful. Um, and that's also a pattern you see right now in serial entrepreneurs. So there's got to be some ingredients which you just need to fulfill um, to be successful at the end of the day. The world has changed. I mean, there has been entrepreneurs and startups uh, 
for the last 1,000 years. I mean, we heard the story of uh, Siemens, who was, which was founded in 1847 in a, in a garage in Germany, became a big company. What really has changed, I think, over the last 20, 30 years is the world has come together, the information flow is so massive, the internet has opened up the channels. Information is available all the time right now. And if you look at the most valuable companies in the world, most of them, if you look at it, are just existing since 10, 15, 20 years. That has never happened before. So money is flowing much faster right now, um, and you got viral applications because of the internet right now. And so one of the, the ingredients you have to have is to play this piano as a CEO, as a founder, um, how to get attention, um, how to create emotions on the other side. I mean, uh, you know, you can even find or create positive emotions on the investor side by presenting digital graveyards. Um, yeah, so holographs, so the, the person who has died five years ago is talking to, um, to the people who are left on this planet with different video messages, things like this. So you can turn negative things into positive things and create positive emotions on the investor side. And at the end of the day, you know, with all Excel spreadsheets out there, um, at the end of the day, it's also you know, the gut feeling on the other side uh, if you decide to go for a company and a team or not. Uh, Mr. Schenk, is there a school for this? Um, is, there, is, there, is there some somewhere people can learn all those skills? Well, um, <laughs> there are schools at universities. Interestingly, like um, uh, um, um, Elon Musk is just like mounting actually a, a school in, uh, um, uh, in, in, in the valley um, uh, where um, uh, and, and, and Peter Thiel is also on the track like that. It's completely kind of like, uh, um, uh, well, disrupt or take upside down the existing educational system. It's like where you start early on, like problem solving. Like uh, this is not teach today at university. It's like you teach one directional, like uh, uh, some sort of information. And you're supposed to learn that, like, uh, and that continues for years. But you're not like really learn how to solve problem. So there are many ingredients as a startup, as a founder, that you require that are not really educated, like in our existing school and university system. Mr. Nikolic, how does a CEO get his skills? Well, CEO title in a startup is a bullshit title. So basically, uh, I don't know why I put that there. <laughs> uh, so, but but basically, I mean, uh, uh, it, you start working as a founder. That means that you're. Uh, working uh, and doing stuff that, that you never did before, and, but you have to because there's no one else around. Uh, and then you, you slowly, gradually learn that there are people who are actually much better than you at, at doing that, and then your job becomes finding that people and finding money to hire them, and then you become a CEO, you know, because that's money and people, you know. So that's how you learn to be a CEO, if you survive enough to, to get to that point. And you survive by doing everything, you know. So, especially me. I mean, we we have three three co-founders. I'm the only non-technical one. So basically, you know what I mean. You know? So, I had to do everything. So, um, uh, uh, and 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 of course, I half of the things I did very bad. And good gracious, I mean, that's over now. So, I can focus on on my my uh, forte. Uh, oh, I mean. I have like sort of a degree, but uh, I, I have MBA, but I did that only because of my parents. So it has nothing to do with, with this, you know, so you don't have to have. I think you learn, you learn your skills and uh, basically entrepreneurship gets uh, uh, out of you what, what's in your nature. And, and very fastly, I mean, very quickly you learn if that job is for you or not, because it's very, you, it grinds you down to the, to the, I mean, it influences you, it affects your family, it affects your life. So basically, um, uh, very soon you find out if you have what it takes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Eckstein, what, what we've heard during these uh, two and a half days of, of listening of brilliant ideas from the region is that they are often very brilliant, but sometimes they need a refined, uh, let's say, business plan, investment plan at the end. Um, can you do without it? Uh, what can you do without it? And uh, why is it so important to have a viable business plan? I, I think um, every startup goes through very similar uh, uh, stages uh, and and um, um, and every region does that in a way um, 
And what we, from our point of view, saw in the last two and a half days uh, was extremely impressive in, in terms of the strength of, of the fundamental ideas. Uh, what we also are convinced about is that there is a lot of talent here, it's not, not last but not least coding talent, right? Uh, but what, what uh, a market like Southeastern Europe sometimes needs more of, right, uh, is, is making sure there is a product market fit, making sure uh, that um, there are the kind of classic things that Western, Northern investors would be looking for uh, in terms of how it's pitched, in terms of business plan, in terms of, in terms of KPIs. Uh, so, so there is still some, let's say, room for growth. Uh, and of course, you know, that's now pro domo. Uh, that's what we think uh, we can bring to the party. It took, in other areas, from London to Berlin, uh, uh, quite a long time to actually develop an ecosystem that provides that on top of uh, what founders bring to the party themselves naturally. Um, and, and, and those are the two things that, that you both need uh, and, and, that, and, that, uh, and where things here are moving a lot uh, and where we believe we can bring something to the party um, too. Thank you. Um, Mr. Um, when you when you talk to startups um, and when you, when you try to analyze their teams, what's a better, what's a good combination? Is there a good combination of those naturally talented people and highly educated in some special areas? Mr. Nikolic already started talking about it a little bit, but what is the good relation between those natural talents and really narrowly educated people? Yeah, I wouldn't say that there is a, you know, one solution fits all answer to this. Um, I, in, in my experience um, uh, in Vienna, I see really different startups, I mean, di different groups of people getting together f to, to, to sell or move an idea to, 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 solve, to solve a certain problem. And I would say the ones that fit, uh, that, that do best are the ones that have, have be best understanding among themselves. Of course, together with, uh, with uh, tech people, well, it's always good to have someone who understands business because out of it, at one point, you will be in problems. Um, there is good, 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 good um, uh, uh, group if you have also someone who is more into creative side of the business. So um, it, it really all depends what the business is all about. Uh, what I see a lot as well um, are you know uh, solo guys, so one uh, one man bands that are just not willing to get another people on the team, and uh, those are like the most problematic in my experience. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm I think, sure that you know have a cut experience. <laughs> but but I that. think you know talking about the CEO abilities or leadership abilities, it's more than ever important to have it to, to be able to lead a team and absolutely. have a team around you. Absolutely. More than ever, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I see that uh, what what I what I, what what I saw uh, like really in close that even when everything seems like perfect, you know, like you have a good team, they have solid funding, the idea is good, they are you know like really into developing it. I mean, there is really really a big road road to come to a successful business, you know. And I see that more and more now we have been talking about investors, investors who are educated enough to understand that not a good idea or a good team is the win situation for them to earn money. And that's where, you know, startup world really needs to, to, to learn more and to get more into this real business uh, field. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Nikolic, maybe you can help us clarify the role of CEO in the whole process. I, uh, maybe it would be strange to ask you, uh, do you feel important in your team as a CEO and how important your, your, your role is? But can you, can you help us understand uh, can, can a CEO exist without a team? And can a team exist without a CEO? <laughs> um, uh, it, I mean, uh, okay. Um, ba I mean, basically, um, obviously, a team can exist without a CEO. And uh, CEO can exist without a team, but it's, it's uh, I mean, just him, then. Just him <laughs> for himself in, in front of the mirror, you know. So <laughs> I'm the CEO. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but you know, I think um, when we're talking about startups, obviously, I mean, it's different when you get into a company that already has a set up co uh, corporate culture and processes and procedures and everything that constitutes a company. Startup is just looking for that. 
Um, uh, 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 the, the role of, of, a, of a CEO is some, somewhat, you know, in my case, uh, um, it, it was natural. Um, uh, uh, um, but, but, you know, because other two co-founders are, are uh, uh, technical guys, and, and so they assumed roles that, that were meant for them, and I had just to do everything else. And for the sake of, of uh, 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 creating a company and actually a legal entity, somebody has to be uh, a manager, so that's me. Um, uh, uh, but also, you know, uh, um, uh, those two co-founders, they are leaders in, in, in their field, in, in, in their field in, within, within our startup. So basically, um, uh, uh, my job is to make it uh, look and be attractive enough to, to, to attract talent and, and uh, for them to feel that they can contribute and learn uh, and, and advance. And, uh, and basically, uh, then they take over and, and turn that into something wonderful, which is, uh, which is making our customers happy, right? Uh, um, and, and then you build around that. That's, that's like a skeleton, right? And then you build all the processes that you have to have. Uh, and, and you start learning what, what that process actually has to be, because you see that you're failing behind if, if you don't have it. And, and then you learn how to actually do that, how to implement that. And uh, 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 firstly, you, you, you manage, and then, then you, you find people who can actually, who know what they're doing, and, and actually bring that. Uh, for instance, the last thing we did with that is, is actually a customer success. I mean, we're, we're just finishing building our sales team. And, and of course, you have the, 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 the hunters, the, the guys who are bringing logos in. But then somebody has to take that logo and, and the, the new customers and actually make them very happy. Uh, because uh, they're with us, and, uh, and we brought a guy who actually forbade, so we, none of us can actually say support. It's all, only happiness and success. So basically that, that, and you find the guy like that, and then you just, you know, tell me what you want, and please, please don't work for those Swiss guys and come back to Serbia, you know. So, and, uh, um, uh, uh, so that's the role of CEO, in, uh, I mean, and it's not called CEO, because the role of the CEO is, is getting bonuses at the end of the year, you know. So I don't have that, so I'm not CEO. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Uh, uh, Mr. Schenk, uh, you, you certainly met a lot of guys with, with, who were starting their, their stories. Um, and you've heard a lot of ideas that are unreal. What would you suggest as the best reality check before they come to an investor? What is the best way to check the reality status of, of the idea? Well, um, why can't an idea like when you hear a lot be unreal? Because in the unreal, like uh, when you listen to it, like it sounds unreal. Maybe there's something into it. So this is like uh, you know starting up something that merely like turning something from upside down. If a model is broken, like if you're too much in the reality, maybe you're just doing an evolution, right? Um, uh, but the real things like I mean, it sounds unreal because it has never it hasn't been tested, it hasn't been done before, and that might be really the next big thing. Mr. Rind, is there, is there an easy way to do this? There's never, there's never an easy way. Um, you know, coming back to the, to the question, I think the ability to react to change uh, is a very important factor these days. Because change, the world is changing very much. Uh, no business plan ever has been executed the way it was written. Yeah. Um, and to be able to, to react on changing situation which you didn't expect, I think is a very important ingredient these days. And, and also, you know, if being prepared. Um, keep in mind, I mean, just the latest survey on, on pitch deck um, among 900 VCs in, in, uh, in the Valley. So, how much time do they spend on a pitch deck, which they receive? 3.3 minutes. Um, they look at the team, they look at the um, um, competitive scale, and they look at the finance numbers and the projections. That's it, three, four pages. So it's also something to keep in mind, I think, if you get prepared. Thank you for this practical advice. Uh, uh, Mr. Eckstein, uh, in those three and, five, three and a half minutes, um, you also have to uh, present a future for the project. Uh, how much can you actually focus on that future? How much it depends on what you say that's going to happen? Um, 
Ob obviously, you need a product vision. I think part of the three to four charge has to be, you know, this is the problem that's there, and I, this is how I want to solve it. Um, so, so without that, uh, obviously, the whole the whole thing doesn't really make sense, uh, and and that's why um, I, I haven't seen that study. But most likely, uh, that that is actually part of it. So you think in, in three and a half minutes, there's plenty of time to say everything you need to persuade an investor? Um, well, you know, uh, you can pose it as a question uh, and say, you know, what kind of investors are that that uh, give an idea that I've sweated about for months, only three and a half minutes? Impossible. Uh, yes, you know, maybe that's an unfair, uh, unfair way of, of, of dealing with stuff that uh, Many people may have invested a lot of energy into, uh, but it's also reality. Um, if, you, if, you take, uh, if you take our situation here, uh, we had close to 900 applications. Um, if you multiply that by uh, 15 minutes, you know, we, 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 we spend weeks just looking, uh, going through the decks and then selecting them. Uh, so that is just reality. So uh, fundamentally, that's on the, on, 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 on the founder side. Uh, Either you find a way to compress it to five minutes, seven minutes, three minutes, uh, mm -hmm. or you need to, uh, to find another way uh, to, uh, to, to find an investor, right? You can try, I don't know, find restaurants where they go eat every night. Uh, but if you want to go the classic way, uh, that's like uh, that small hole that you have to find a way through. I mean, and that's the most difficult thing in anything, I would say, you know, making your idea as simple as possible. I mean, presenting it in as simple as possible way to, in order to persuade the investor to go for it. I mean, that's the art in, in many industries and in this one as well, preparing and, good and the, presentation. And, and of course, there are these, like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, how do you say that, these idiomatic expressions, like, uh, if the idea is really good and if you are really good, then you can express it in simple terms and very fast, right? Uh, uh, granted, that's easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. At the same Absolutely. time, by the way, it's also true, um, um, we are now, uh, it, it now seems like the bottleneck is the investor, right? And in, 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 uh, in, in some ways it is, uh, but we should also not forget that, uh, you know, there, there, there is a lot more money than good ideas. Uh, and a lot more good ideas than good CEOs and good executions. There is, there is this, uh, this uh, uh, you know, from, from Google, they would tell you that 95% of every idea is execution. Um, and, and, and therefore, in a way, um, you asked before what has changed. If you look at the last, let's say, 25 years, there has been a com a, a, a quite a rebalancing uh, between investors and, 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 and founders um, to the advantage of founders because it has become clear, um, especially as I mentioned before in times of zero interest rates, uh, that there is far more money uh, uh, than there is good ideas and therefore all the smart investors and of course, you know, right, um, they would, they would uh, uh, th it's very clear that uh, um, the only way to get a long term return is if you if you are on, on an eye to eye level with your founder, right? So the times when there was this investor with that money and, and, and somewhere down there is that founder and he has to do what the investor says, that's over, right? And I think that's important and it's good that way. At the same time, that has made the relationship a lot more complex um, um, because investors have understood that the industry, the asset class on, it, on a whole is negative. Right? We should never forget that. Right? Uh, it's, it's, it, it's very much a winner-takes-all game, and the asset class on the whole is very difficult to, to tackle. Um, on the other hand, uh, founders have got that difficult job of finding a way of fitting into those three and a half minutes. Um, and, and I'd say, you're very good at it, by the way. I've seen your presentations. Uh, so, so CEOs have to be much better today at communicating. Um, then they used to have to be, let's say, 10 years ago or 20 years ago. The kind of communication strength of CEOs has to be very, very high these days. And if anything, that's getting even more pronounced. Um, so the CEO role essentially is a PR guy, right? A very smart PR guy. At the same time, he's a guy that's an enabler for his company. So he's servicing the people that actually do the things rather than how it used to be for very long, the other way around. 
Thank you very much for, because we are a little bit running out of time. For the closing remarks, I would like Mr. Ring to help me conclude also on the side of investors. Um, has something changed and what is the reason why uh, sometimes from the side of startup uh, owners, it seems like investors are more conservative now uh, than they used to be. Is there a lack of trust or is, is the system getting more complicated? No, I would simply say, you know, in the last 20 years, there have been very successful companies, but many investors also have lost a lot of money in deals. Um, and, and referring to what Lothar said, I mean, at the end of the day, if you are early stage seed investor, you know that eight out of 10 of your investments are not existing in two or three years. You should know about it. If you're better, you're lucky, but this is the kind of expectation you have to deal with. So, yeah, so with the experience you have made or investors have made over the last uh, 20, 30 years, um, that's what you have to keep in mind. Um, but nevertheless, you know, if you look at the last two days, it uh, was an amazing event. Um, we saw a lot of dreams and some of we will catch later on today. Um, it was also surprising to see that um, some pitch decks haven't been that compelling were made, you know, much better cases when the people were presenting excellent. Um, so that's also an important factor. So one thing is the other thing is at the end of the day to have a personal presentation to the people. Um, so in that regards, um, yeah, I was I was really pleased. And um, investors are cautious, and they were always cautious. Um, but it's at the end of the day up to the person, the people, the team to convince. Thank you. I think that would be a good closing remark. If if someone wants to add something, that would be totally fine. Um, if not, thank you all for for to, for participating today. This is uh, this concludes the panel of day three. Uh, we're going to make another short break, and then we're going to come back here for a bit more of brilliant ideas uh, from the region. And don't forget, tonight at 8 uh, p.m. we start the ceremony. Uh, then we'll know who caught business. Thank you all.